here to lacrosse now he is tom eschen i'm travis Sudgers. thanks for making us part of your week and on as well and some great guests today as always we have nick myers the head yes. coach of ohio state we'll talk to him in a really fun conversation with carson harris the drexel all-american she was awesome for that team a lot of fun with her um really a, a great uh the personality and she's so good on the field too we'll talk about that with drexel including uh the gift the, yeah the going away of skinny jeans. That's what I was trying oh, to say. Oh, yeah. They're gone. Yeah, there's a gift, Christmas gift and yeah. jeans involved. Anyway, just stay tuned for that. Yeah. Um, but we're going to... He's a first-team All-American in USA Lacrosse Magazine, the reigning CA Player of the Year. Carson Harris joins us now. Carson, thank you so much for coming on, uh, coming off the holiday season. Any good gifts or anything you got over the course of the last few weeks? Yeah, um, for sure, I think. I'm, I'm trying to upgrade my outfit a little, my outfits a little bit. So I'm, I'm finally, I feel like I got cool girl jeans for the first time in a long time. Wow. Congratulations. Yeah. I mean, that's a big step in anyone's life. I think I haven't gotten jeans yeah. in like 10 years. So, I mean, for you. Are, are, that's what I'm trying to keep up with the trends. <laughs> are the cool girl jeans now like away from skinny jeans? Is that what I've been hearing? Yeah. And I held out for a long time. I was like, no, there's no way this is coming back into style. Like, I'm not doing this. Um, but yeah, now the whole new style is just like, I think they were called ultra high rise nineties jeans is what I bought, which wow. was show, but hmm. interesting. Yeah. yeah. What's old is new again. Yeah. You're talking to a couple of guys about girl jeans. So we're, we're lost on that's lost on us. All right. <laughs> I, I just know my wife has continued to hold out, so we'll we'll see when we get to that, when we get to the, the done with the skinny jeans phase. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, they didn't expect to start on that. Let's, Who knew? Well, Jeans. <laughs> let, let's talk some lacrosse. You guys are coming off first NCAA tournament in program history last year. When did you guys know last year was going to be special? Um, I think pretty early in the season, honestly. Uh, we, I, I always say the Georgetown game was my biggest um, like momentum shifter for me because that was a game. Obviously, we were nervous. Georgetown's a big name. We're going into it feeling prepared, um, but you're never really sure. And we just went out and played the best lacrosse that I've ever seen us play. Um, and it wasn't even at that point about beating Georgetown. It was just about how good we looked on the field um, and how well we played, how fast we played, and how clean we played. And I think that gave everyone a lot of confidence for the rest of the season, um, just because how amazing we looked. And then we at Drexel, because I was, when I was a freshman, I was a sophomore, we didn't really have winning records. And I think that was the moment where we were like, all right, we're a winning team. Like, we were able to kind of develop a winning mentality. And once we got that, we were pretty unstoppable. Yeah, I, I find it interesting watching the way you play, the, your style there. And, of course, with Jill moving on and you bring in Kim Hillier, too, I'm sure things might be a little different. But still, you got this, a lot of the same personnel coming back. I guess I find that so unique to the CAA, too. Like, do you feel like that's an advantage both in and out of conference, just a little bit more up and down, fast pace? Like, do you feel like that has helped your success and maybe turn sort of the dial on things and become a little bit more successful as a program? Yeah, for sure. I think that the CAA especially, um, and even really specifically to our team, is just this grit mentality. I think every CAA game is just a battle. Um, in terms of speed and just pure grit. And I think now we're really excited, especially with Kim, to take it to that next level where now we have played with grit. We know what passion is like. Like Jill helped us love the game again. Um, and now we can use that and that same grit that you find in the CAA and also add in all of those powerhouse skills that you find in like the ACC and the Big Ten that we can kind of help um, incorporate into our game as well. So I think it's definitely helped us go to the next level. Um, and we can go even higher. Yeah. We talk about the CAA all the time, men's and women's, and you mentioned grit. It's the word that everybody, every coach, every player throws around. For you, was that something you developed once you got to Drexel, or were you, like, priding yourself on being a gritty, kind of do-it-all player before you got there? Um, I've definitely been always a very gritty player. Um, like, my dad, it's a running joke in my family that I'm the most unathletic D1 lacrosse player, like, you will ever meet. Um, and so I never really was able to rely on just pure stick skills. That was never really my thing. Um, and so I think because of that, I just developed this grit, and I figured if I can out-hustle everybody, then it doesn't matter. Just My stick skills just have to be good enough at that point. And I think um, 
So I think that's kind of, I've always been that player that's just like, all right, we're going to out-hustle and we're going to out-grit and hope the stick skills catch up. So <laughs> that's kind of always been how I am. But wait, you say you're unathletic. Didn't you run track in high school? Yeah, you're one of the fastest lacrosse players <laughs> I've ever seen, Carson. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I did run track, run track and I did also play soccer in high school. So, um, all right, so let's, <laughs> so not completely but, unathletic. <laughs> but if you asked me to play any other sport, you wouldn't even think that I knew how to play like watching me play baseball is unbelievable watching me throw football is unbelievable like i have very specific skill sets all right that's fair that's I mean, fair it's interesting that you talk about that because i think i read an article where you were mentioning like you wanted to set the record in draw controls last year instead i mean and you did it in goals of course and but draw was sort of what you really wanted to do i think that really you know is a mentality that not everybody has you know people want to score goals all the time and you did that but draw to me for you was so important as well. Like that probably speaks a lot to what your mindset is going into a season, into a game, right? Yeah. Oh, for sure. And I think um, Kim's mentioned at this point to me also that she's noticed that when I'm getting draws, I score goals. Or when I'm scoring goals, I'm winning draws. Like they're very connected in my game. Um, and I think that is truly because it goes back to what I just said about like that grit and hoping your stick skills follow. Because when I'm winning draws, like I, I feel um, – very empowered on the field like that's one of my favorite things to do because it is just such a hustle thing um and also it's just such a smart thing like i love trying to like outsmart people on the draw i think and um that kind of helps me feel more confident in the rest of my play for sure yeah, yeah it's the it's the whole defense into offense mentality of like mm -hmm. a lot of other sports you mentioned trying to hone in on your draw skills, and I, I remember watching Kayla Trainer do it at Syracuse, who like never took draws for the first couple of years, and all of a sudden just decided, all right, I'm going to do this, and became one of the best in, in the country. And we've seen Charlotte North go from just being an offensive player to jumping in and taking draws. What is it about being a great player and deciding, maybe even later in your college career, you know what, I want to go to the draw circle and be that person too? I think that... Well, I'm very lucky because I started out there, like, my since my freshman year, I've been on the circle, so I've had a lot of um, luck in terms of just, like, kind of consistently getting my game better in that aspect. Um, but I think the mentality is, is that you just want to be a part of everything, especially when you have that confidence on the field and you've kind of built that confidence. It just makes you want to be a part of everything. Like, you want to be the one, especially for me, like, I want to be the one on defense getting, like, cause turnovers, and I want to be the one on offense scoring goals, and it's kind of settled into that middle, too, where... I want to be an impact between the 30s, which is obviously helps with the draw. So I think for me at least, I can't speak obviously for Kayla Trainer or Charlotte North, but I think it's just wanting to make an impact every single place that's possible. Um, and that's kind of led me to love the draw so much, I think. Yeah, and obviously it's contributed to everything else you do, as you mentioned, yeah. for sure. So I, I want to ask you this, because I, I talked to Kim right after she got the job, and I think it was either before or after the interview, I'm like, oh, I, I know there's a lot of upperclassmen last year, like, who you got? You know, I don't want the cupboard to be bare. She goes, oh, majority of everybody's coming back. I go, whoa, like, that's incredible that, that have that much talent coming back from such a close-knit group. So, like, for you guys, was it a group chat? Did you all decide together? Was it individually on coming back? I know it's not every single person, but the majority of your core is there. How did that all come to fruition in which you guys were like, yeah, we're going to try to run this back? Yeah, oh, there was definitely talk behind the scenes. Uh, <laughs> who was, like, we got all the calls from Jill, I think. I don't even remember when it was, but um, that was kind of like, okay, do you guys want to come back? What are you guys thinking? And we were all like, yeah, we'll think about it, and immediately got off the phone and texted, like, our group chat, and we are like, all right, I'm only going if you're going. Like, what's, what are we doing here? Like, Lucy, I, Lucy always says, like, I was coming back if you three were coming back, and <laughs> and I was like, I'm coming back if Colleen comes back. Like, we all had, and, like, Colleen was with Zoe. Like, we all were like, all right, if the four of us are here, like, we're all in. So um, I think that you could have pulled a couple of us without the four, but the four of us were definitely – one of us wasn't going to let – all three of them stay and us not stay. If that makes sense. Like, yeah. it was either it wasn't an all or nothing deal, but there was no way one of us was going to back out if the three of us stayed. So, <laughs> <laughs> so there, there was definitely talk. Yeah, and but then you have the coaching change, which probably plays a little bit into the role. When now in the fall with Kim, what's been similar and what's been different from what you guys have been used to over the last couple of years with Jill? Yeah, I think. Um, we are also obviously incredibly grateful for everything that Jill did for us. Um, and 
Jill, like I said earlier, really taught us how to love lacrosse. Um, she like taught us so much passion and hard work. Um, and Kim, I think Kim is definitely a little bit more of like brings a little bit of an intensity with her that just kind of makes you you're just locked in. Like the whole practice, I think things are really really fast with Kim. Um, you're never standing. The first week of fall ball. That was the most tired I've ever been in athletic practices, literally ever. Like, we were so sore. Everyone was exhausted. Um, and eventually, obviously, we figured it out. But I think with Kim, like, there's no – you get no rest in practice. Like, everything is go, go, go. And she does it – obviously, she knows exactly how to prepare a team. So I think that's part of why we're all looking forward to the spring so much because we're excited to show off everything we've been doing this fall. Um, and it's definitely been fast and a huge emphasis on kind of just your basic – stick work and stuff like that because we've never that's never been our strong suit so we're learning um we're learning stick work again kind of like right from the beginning starting with the like on your knees throwing and catching very basic and we've kind of worked our way through the ball so it's definitely been fun yeah so obviously you had such a great regular season the best in program history and then you know you competed so hard in the postseason only to lose the JMU in the, in the overtime game where things were kind of funky in the overtime. I, I did the game. I know what happened at the end of that game, Carson. And then you get to the NCAA tournament and you lose to Rutgers. How much is that part of, you know, your every single day thought process? Uh, you know, especially like you said, you work so hard in fall ball now as you approach the spring here. Yeah, I think um, it's definitely a redemption season for us. I think those, those two games – we're definitely like impactful in the way that we kind of approach the fall and how we're approaching the spring. I think we do want to prove, um, I think it's not even just those two games. We want to prove to everyone that we are a top 20 team. Like we belong in the top 20. Um, like last year wasn't a fluke. And I think it was kind of easy for people to pull those last two games in and say like, Oh, they plateaued. Like, Oh, they, they started to fall off. Like it was just a fluke. So I think this season in general is going to be fun to prove to everyone that like, no, we're a top 20 program. We are very good. Um, and we're ready to bring it for the next couple of years. So, yeah, I, I feel like in, for some, for a program that accomplished such a, a huge feat last year, it also kind of gives you a chip on your shoulder still at how it ended. Like, it's like you got the best combination of both coming into this year. Right. Like we have all of that confidence that we developed last season. We're still so confident in ourselves. Um, and then at the same time, we still have something to prove. We still have something to do, which honestly I'm looking forward to because, you know, there's, there's still unfinished business we have to attend to. And that's definitely the best motivator. So. All right. We can't have anybody on here that goes to school or is from Philadelphia with ask it, without asking a Wawa order. Like what's your go-to? <laughs> oh God. Mine is like, I'm like a five-year-old. Um, <laughs> mine is a meatball sub and mac and cheese. <laughs> Boom. Wow. They've the really mac and cheese is good. Yeah, they've mac really expanded good. over the last several years. They got mac and cheese now. They got all sorts of stuff. Also, if you've never had the chocolate, what's it called? The chocolate chocolate sip chip cream smoothie. Oh. I don't know what makes it different from a milkshake, but it's amazing. That's <laughs> also a good good thing to have. I'm going to have to try that. While we're talking food, so you're from Maryland originally, but obviously you've, you've made your home in Philly. Are, are you going, like, if you had to have one meal, are you going with um, a cheesesteak or a crab cake? Like, what's your go-to now that you've spent some time in different places here? Oh, crab crab cake all the way. I'm, I'm a huge crab person. I, hot take, don't love Philly cheesesteaks. Mm. Wow. I know. I know. But, so I got to go crab. Good choice. Carson Harris throwing out hot takes <laughs> from, the, from the show. But she's good enough at lacrosse this where is true. everything else is it fine. Works. You can have as much, you can do that as much as you want. Like, I will keep okay. you, right? <laughs> yeah, hopefully I'll be forgiven for the. <laughs> uh, Carson, we appreciate the time. Thank you so much. And we can't wait to watch you here this upcoming spring. Of course. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it.